You are listening to Grasslands Radio, CUZ FM. Yes, Lee John, CUZ FM, and you're talking to Billy T on 310310. We want to thank Jock for uh, keeping us laughing for the last 10 minutes or so. And if you want to give me a call, the lines are open. Hi there. Oh, Billy, this is Simon. I'm, I'm not very well. Yeah, I can tell, Simon. See, I'm sorry I, to hear that. I've got a temperature, back pains, headache, and I'm all shivery. No, I, I wouldn't go to the doctor, but I'm afraid he might tell me the worst. No, 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 I wouldn't worry too much. It sounds like a classic case of flu to me, mate. There's a lot of it going about. In fact, I'm just starting to feel a little seedy myself. Yeah, but whatever he tells me, it's something really bad. Oh, no, I wouldn't worry about that, mate. I'd take an example from my cousin, Paddy O. James, who, um, he went to the doctor and the doctor told him he only had six months to live and he's still alive. What, what did he do? Well, he didn't pay the doctor's bill, so the doctor gave him another six months. <laughs> I feel a bit off colour, you know. No, have you picked something up from those awful jokes you were telling last night? Well, you mean the one between, about the octopus and the bagpipes? And... No, the one about the nun, the traffic cop and the grand piano. Jock liked it. Jock told it. <laughs> oh, I won't be home for dinner tonight. I'm going to the cafe with Nigel. No, oh, not Nigel the nerd again. Uh, be fair, Nadine. It's Nigel the nerd, LLB. <laughs> yeah. I am taking an option in customary law and legal codes of the pre-European Māori. Oh, is Nigel doing the course with you? No, Mum. He's the lecturer. Bye. Mm -hmm. I'm off too. Bye, Dad. Bye, Bye love. Bye, Dad. Yeah, no, 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 baby. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Billy? You seem to be miles away. Well, I wish I was miles away. Somewhere warm. Oh, it's perfectly warm in here. Well, it's not it's like an icebox in here. Oh, are you sickening with something? What? Let me look at your tongue. Eh? Huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. Keep it still, keep it still. Ha. Ah. Oh dear, it's got little oh. spots on it. Bonjour. Oh, do you see the Bronco game? Ooh, mm. What are you doing? I'm drying my tongue. What does it look like? By hanging it out. Your hotel wouldn't give me the hair dryer and I couldn't possibly go out with a wet tongue. <laughs> no, no, I don't suppose you can. Where are you going? To the doctor's. Oh, wow. Well. well, do you want me to stay and mind the house for you while you're away? Don't you mean mind the fridge? Actually, I do need an egg. I'm going to make a souffle. With one egg? Oh, three or four would be better. Hey, I've got a great idea. Why don't I make it here and you can all share it when you get back? Well, the way I'm feeling, I might not be coming back. Oh, don't be silly, Billy. Go up and get dressed. What for? Well, you can't go to the doctor with your pyjamas on. Well, why not? They do it at the hospital. That's probably where I'll end up. Oh, this sounds serious. I'll tell you what. You won't be needing any souffle. <laughs> chicken pox. I must have had chicken pox. Everybody's had chicken well, pox. Well, you've got it now. Oh, adults don't get chicken pox. It's not natural. Have you got chicken pox, Bill? No, Greg, I've got foot and mouth disease. That's why we're talking about chicken pox. <laughs> I didn't think that human beings could actually catch foot and mouth disease. Because if you did, we'd have to throw you in a huge pit and burn your carcass. Ooh, it'd be awful. Greg, he hasn't got foot 
foot and mouth disease. Oh, well, that is a relief. Otherwise, we'd all have to put on gumboots and, and wade through pools of dead just to get inside the house. He's got chicken pox. Oh. Well, why are we all talking about foot and mouth disease? Greg. Yeah, shut up. Oh. oh, Billy, you look dreadful. I look dreadful. You ought to see Greg from this angle. <laughs> look, take this, go upstairs, and I'll bring you some tea in a minute. Yeah, all right. And the paper? Yes. And the portable TV? Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to bring up the Mark II, too? Oh, could you? Because I've been wanting to set the tappets all week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it won't be too long with the tea, eh? No. It started. The day in the life of the world's worst patient and the world's most patient nurse. Mind you, sis. I can imagine Bill's a bit distraught. What with the terrible sense of loss he must be facing. Sink. All oh, right. What are you talking about? Well, these things are important to a man, even at Billy's age. What? Look, I didn't want to say too much in front of him. You know, about his... Well, uh... His manhood, uh, his degenerative powers. Greg, have you gone completely mad? He's got chicken pox. Precisely, Thelma. And that is the tragedy. Chicken pox in the adult male. It has been known to cause, well, you know, loss of certain functions. Greg, that's mumps. Yeah, but chicken pox is a form of mumps, isn't it? Well, I should know. I mean, I had it when I was in Australia, but only as a child, you see. So fortunately, my functions uh, haven't been affected. As far as I know. Hey, what's happening with the tea, you fellas? I think you'll find you'll need more than a cup of chassis. This may even end up in counselling. The tea! What's with the tea? <laughs> I'm the one that's going to end up in counselling. Look, just try and break it to him gently, Thelma. Be careful of his manar. What? Oh. Greg! <laughs> Just a bit of hygiene control, sis. Cutting down the risk of cross-infection. Now, where was Billy sitting when he first felt ill? There. Right. There. That's made that chair safe. What's that? Disinfectant. Antibacterial spray. Death to the virus. Yeah, well, it'll be death to you if you kill off my pot plants. Sis, how can you compare a pot plant to a human life? Greg, we are talking chicken pox which you've already had or so you say and what about you and the girls oh, not to mention visitors i had chicken pox when i was eight years old and the girls have already had it and the visitors can take their own chances yeah but these viruses are tricky little devils these days they can mutate and lie dormant in cells for thousands of years look, look greg i've got to go to rehearsal in a minute and i'll be there for about an hour and a half do you think that you could stay here and look after billy just in case he needs something I wouldn't be the true brother to you that I am, Thelma Reynolds, if I was to leave Billy up there neglected. Look, I know you two are going through a difficult time, but you go off and do your singing and leave your dear old brother Greg to care for the afflicted, care for the sick, care for the unfit. Greg! Yeah? Shut up. <gasps> oh. Now, sis, leave it to me. I've read up on counselling. Sis. What? What do you reckon we should hang up a little yellow flag at the bottom of the gate? Oh. That's what we do in the Navy. What is that? Death to the virus. Well, it's tell God. Yeah, she's gone off to rehearsal, mate, and left you in my care. Sorry I can't come too close. What are you worried about? You said you had chicken pox. That's right, Bill, but I'm more worried about you. I've already got chicken pox. Exactly, mate. Your immune system is totally collapsed. <gasps> I could infect you with anything. Oh, yeah, like terminal stupidity. You're feverish, Bill, aren't you? You don't know what you're saying. No, but I know what I feel, and I'm bored. Right, William James, you and I are going to have a little chinwag. <laughs> Comfy? Not now. Bill, as a man, I know what you must be going through. Yeah, well, I wish I could say the same, because I haven't got a clue what you're going through. You're bitter, aren't you, Bill? <sighs> Look, I know what you're worried about, mate. Look, not being able to get a... <laughs> 
always been... Uh, loss of function. Must be terrifying to any man. What loss of function? Well, I don't have to spell it out to you, Bill. I thought you and Thelma would have already discussed this. D discussed what? Chicken pox in the adult. The adult male. <laughs> look, Bill, there's some ways to look at this. You've already got two beautiful, adoring daughters. Thelma probably doesn't want any more children. Greg, that's mumps. That's what you want to believe, isn't it, Bill? But these viruses, you know, they can mutate into any form they like. Yeah, even Australians. <laughs> You're already experiencing the classical progression, aren't you, Bill? Hmm? Disbelief, followed by denial and anger. But eventually, you will find an inner peace. <laughs> Greg, you don't know what you're talking about. Now, that's not fair, Billy. When you're at work, I watch every episode of The Flying Doctors. <laughs> Look, I've finished reading the newspaper. If you really want to make yourself useful, go and get me a metro. Oh, right. You sure you wouldn't rather have a Playboy? <laughs> oh, no. I don't suppose you would. <laughs> If you're a burglar, you're wasting your time. Everything's on HP. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Mr. James, it's Nigel. Nigel Fitchurch. Oh, I was just dropping off some books for Lydia. Oh, right, OK. Oh, bring them up here. I haven't got anything to read. Oh, all right. Kia ora, Mr. James. Ooh, you're in bed. <laughs> Not much gets past you, eh, Nigel? Size the situation up at a glance. No wonder you're at the Polytech. Are you ill? <sighs> no, Nigel. I'm withdrawing. I'm no longer able to cope with the ancient wrongs suffered by my race, eh? I quite understand, Mr. James. You are bent beneath an intolerable car winger. Uh, it's, uh, bent beneath a what? Car winger. Uh, uh, Peacock. Uh, Utanga. Uh, Burden. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and I've got chicken pox. Oh, well, in that case, Mr. James, can I, on behalf of my race, offer you a personal apology? What for? What have you done? What have we done? Oh, Mr. James, you can't be serious. <laughs> Only introduced to the shores of Aotearoa, not merely chicken pox, but smallpox, typhus, tuberculosis, alcoholism, and the scourge of syphilis. <laughs> if you've got all those, you better get out of this room. <laughs> that is so typical of the inner strength of the Tangata Whenua. <laughs> to meet every kennel with a fucking nene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always doing that, eh? <laughs> What am I always doing? Meeting every injury with a jest, Mr. James. Oh, yeah, right. I'll remember that. Yeah, well, what are you actually doing here, Nigel? Are you uh, distributing pamphlets for parking as a wash with guilt or, or uh, lobbying for the Toyro East Very, Very Green Party or what? No, I'm <laughs> dropping some books off for Lydia. She's doing my course, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. She told us. What is it? Unlawful customs of the pre Maori European, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Customary law of the pre European Maori. Ah, oh, right, right. You, uh, you bring your, deliver your books to all your students, do you? Yes. Uh, no. Well, which one is it? Well, so far, Lydia's the only one doing my course. Uh, but we're hoping to have it made compulsory. Oh, you should have your own Mr. Jackson, then. Mm, good idea. <laughs> well, if you could pass those on to Lydia, I'd better be off. Yeah, right, aren't we? And can I say, Mr. James, that this is not your fault? <laughs> oh, that's a relief, Nigel. No. You're the innocent victim of a fatal combination. Pākehā illness treated with Pākehā medicine. Nigel, I've only got chicken pox. Nah, you may call it chicken pox, Mr. James. But to those of us who have embraced the holistic medicine of the Māori, know it to be an affliction of the soul. The Awe. The Awe. Yeah, well, I'm feeling a little bit tired now, and I just uh, I wonder if you wouldn't mind going Awe. <laughs> <laughs> Another kino answered with a fucking nene. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lot much better now, thanks, Nigel. Yeah. 
Have you ever thought of being a doctor? <laughs> doctors? Who needs doctors when you got Greg Reynolds on the job? Fellow of the Australasian College of Life. Well, what are you doing here? You're not a doctor. No, I'm a lawyer. Has it come to this, Bill? Look, just because of what we talked about before doesn't mean to say you've got to make your will out. I mean, there's still heaps of things to live for. Your children, your wife. Brothers-in-law. Exactly. Anyway, you get away from him, Jeez, This man's immune system has collapsed. You could give him anything. I don't want to give him anything. I was borrowing. I was borrowing from the body of Maori Tonga. Yes, well, if I was you, Nigel, I'd be more worried about catching from this body of Maori Tonga. Have you ever had chicken pox? He looks like he might have. I feel I'm armed against such things with a threefold shield of diet, philosophy, and aroha. Oh, yeah? Those are the three new Cook Strait fairies, Greg. <laughs> Another fucking man, <laughs> It wasn't as bad as that. Well, Mr. James, matiatu koe, itiaki, imanaki, kakiti ano. Vaya con Dios. <laughs> the three Cook Strait fairies! <laughs> oh, Jewish, that's priceless, Bill. It wasn't that good, either. <laughs> Greg, Greg, why are you dressed like that? Well, I'm only thinking of you, mate. I am totally sterile. Here you go, Mr. James. Here's your Metro magazine. Five dollars, thank you. Oh, uh, go, I'll owe it to you. Thursday. Fine. I know it's a rubbish bag, but as I said before, I am totally sterile. Sir Brian Bartlett Pears could wear this outfit. Do you look ridiculous? No more ridiculous than Sir Brian Bartlett Pears in his outfit. Yeah, but he hasn't got Waikato Refuse Department stamped all over his. Greg, <laughs> you've had chicken pox. I'm not thinking of me, sis. I'm worried about Billy. I'm protecting him against me, and you lot should be doing the same. Yeah. He's got a point, you know. I reckon Nadine would look really good in a rubbish bag. It would suit her so much better than all the other things she wears. Ah. Yeah, well, they wouldn't be able to get a surgical mask big enough to cover your mouth. Hey, 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 time out, girls. Yes, well, according to Nigel, there's no need for any of this because I am protected by the threefold shield of diet, philosophy, and aroha. <laughs> 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 Three cook straight fairies. <laughs> that is priceless, Bill. <laughs> Aroha is no laughing matter. It is your parka, your shield against this pude pude. What? Pude pude. Disease causing spots on the skin. I looked it up. Now, just a moment. I thought you had chicken pox. I don't think I've had this purry puri. <laughs> is that something like berry berry? They're virtually the same thing, Greg. You know, like um, chicken pox and mumps. <laughs> Geez, that's a bit of a worry. Thank goodness they got me outfit on, eh? <laughs> Except for one thing. What's that? Take your mask off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we can't give up on the food chain, can we? <gasps> Did you know that simply by holistic meditation on aroha, Nigel cured himself of manic depression? Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Well, the simple means of passing it on to everybody else, <laughs> I presume. <laughs> Good one. I'm dying and she says we're all fine. Well, nearly all fine. Poor old Billy's got chicken pox. Oh, tell the whole world. Yeah, it is unusual in adults, isn't it? It's a good thing we've all had it. Oh, hasn't he? <laughs> well, what was it then? Measles. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Greg, Greg, yeah? Mum wants to talk to you. Oh, right. Thank you. Hello, Mum. Yeah? Is that right? Just measles. Well, why didn't you tell me at the time? How are you feeling, mate? I feel like a cane toad embedded on the Pacific Highway, Bill. Oh, that's no good. <coughs> Listen, uh, have you noticed any, uh, you know, loss of, uh, you know? Have you noticed any loss of function? Uh, oh, Bill, you know as well as I do that the doctor said that was mumps. Can we be sure, Greg? Hey? Chicken pox, measles, mumps. You know, those viruses are tricky little devils. 
They could be mutating right now. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. I'm only grateful that I've got two healthy daughters and Tell doesn't want any more kids, eh, Tell? Oh, Bill, just, just leave me alone, eh? I want to be left alone. I didn't wind you up when you were crook. Oh, no. You just gave me acute oh. and overpowering oh. depression. Made ten times worse by Nigel. Kia ora, everyone. Bonjour. Buenas tardes. Konnichiwa. Shalom. Oh, what are you doing here? I thought you were at a late night lecture tonight. I was, but uh, it was cancelled. Oh, yeah, Nigel ran out of pre European customs, did he? No, he didn't. In fact, it's all your fault. Well, me how? I'm post European, aren't I? Nigel has been contaminated by the Pudu Pudu. <laughs> that chicken fox strikes back. All right. <laughs> Kia ora. Oh. Was at home alone in his flat, and oh. I knew you wouldn't mind if I brought him home so that we could nurse him, be his nehi. But Nigel, how could this be? Protected as you were by the threefold shield of diet, philosophy, and aroha. <laughs> Jeez, it doesn't seem half as funny as it did before. It's an honor in a way. Perhaps this burden of suffering will be an atonement for the sins of my forefathers. That's how Sir Jackson said, mate. Speaking of which, how'd you like to go and atone for the sins of your forefathers over at his place? There's been too much suffering going on around here. Dad? Actually, we could put you in with Greg. We could, you could teach him how to be a pre-lawful European. That'll fit a stage of evolution. Oh, jeez, Bill, I feel really crook now. Oh, hey, hey, hey. And get him to describe his theory on mutant viruses. That'll cheer you up no end. Because you won't want any kids, will you, Nigel? Hey? Eh? Well, there'll be no point, mate. They'll all be parkers. Then Lydia or he'll have to drive them into the sea. <laughs> Swore while it was laying eggs, did it, Dale? <laughs> then I tried to cross a fantail with an emu. You know what I got? Hazard to aviation? How'd you manage to breed them, Elf? Oh, confine any of our feathered friends together for long enough, and you'll be amazed what you can produce. You know what? At home, right at this moment, I have confined a couple of rare birds. One's a yeah, breast-beating legal eagle, and the other one's a lesser Australian galah. And you're hoping they'll breed? No, I'm hoping they'll mutate, mate. <laughs> then I might get an Australian awash with guilt and a brother-in-law with a job. <laughs> this was an Eisenberg program in association with New Zealand On Air, with funding support from the Broadcasting Bank.